Well, good afternoon. This is Dr. Kevin Connors. We're going to talk about cancer therapies at uh, for home use. So these are things that would be particularly things done in the home. These are obviously not all inclusive, but these are some of our favorites that we use in home and how they interrelate, um, because that's the question we want to hit um, most importantly today. Obviously, our or my favorite therapy is the Rife um, machine. And you're either using either the True Rife like this or the GB4000. Those are the only two that we really recommend at all. Um, this is, I don't know if that's a F22 or F117. This um, uh, um, bulb on the little bulb on the right is, is just a ground bulb. We don't use that. Um, they just have it in here on the picture. But how about runtime and program use with the Rife? So obviously, all of our patients are using the program that we pro that we wrote for them for overnight use. But can you overdo the Rife? Can you use it too much? Is there is there a, is there a chance that you could overdo your Rife time? With cancer, my answer is no. With, with Lyme disease, the answer is yes, obviously, because it can kill too fast. Um, when you're talking about a bacteria, with, um, uh, especially with lipopolysaccharides in the membrane, you could end up causing a Herxheimer reaction. With cancer, you don't get that. So uh, you cannot rife too much. Um, uh, as I was explaining to somebody in the office today, how much do I rife? So... Uh, when I'm at the office, I'm here Monday through Thursday, typically. Um, I'll typically run the Rife while I'm here at my desk an hour, two hours, maybe even three hours uh, on a, any given day. Today, I didn't do it at all. I was too busy. I didn't have time to do it. Um, but most days, so I'd say two to three days a week, I'm running the Rife while I'm in the office. I get in the office between 7 and uh, about 7, 7.30 every morning. And I leave here about five-ish, six-ish, seven-ish, whatever, at night. When I go home, I'm using the Rife, obviously, and my program overnight. Um, but I actually wrote myself a longer program, an 11-hour program, So, um, because I get Rife time. As soon as I'm sitting down, we're watching TV or we're doing something like that, I'm running the Rife. So I'm getting a lot of Rife time. Um, and I think the more, the merrier. I think, quite honestly, um, uh, it's only by the grace of God that I'm still here, but it's really by the grace of God that he's given me the wisdom of the Rife machine that I'm still here. And I'll say that with no apologies, because it's really, that's what's, I think, the biggest thing that's made the change in my um, with my cancer. So I get as much Rife time as possible if I'm feeling uh, worse because with my symptoms, I tend to go in a roller coasters. So I might have two really good weeks, then I'll just kind of go downhill for a couple of weeks. When I'm on my lower end of the roller coaster, I'm using the Rife more often. I'll come in and sit down on a Saturday and turn the Rife on. Um, and uh, I'll be, anytime I'm sitting down at home, I'm running the Rife. If I'm in, in the low side of the roller coaster at work, then I'm for sure running the Rife at uh, work. And sometimes on a low day, I could run it four, five, six hours during the day. So if I'm feeling worse, I'm doing more Rife time. Um, and the program use, if we did not make a day program for you, you run the night program again during the day. So let's say you're only gonna do it for two hours, just run it for two hours. Um, for instance, with mine at home, I may sit down on a Saturday because I'm going to watch a little bit of college football or something and I turn the Rife on, but then I get up because I have to go do something. I typically don't turn it off. I'll come back three hours later and I'll just put the bulb on my belly again. So um, I run my Rife um, hard, you could say. It could be running some days, it could literally be running on the weekends 20 hours a day. Now I might only be sitting getting 11 hours total rife time, but I'm really, the, the machine's running a lot. Um, so I have no qualms about doing that. The Ion Pro Wave is another instrument that you could use, of course, attached to the Rife, and that can help with detoxification, but it is a way to get some higher frequencies in your body that the True Rife can't uh, uh, 
tolerate through the bulb. So using the foot bath, you could get some higher frequencies, and that's one of the biggest benefits of the pro wave. Now everybody wants to see what it's pulling out of their body and how the water changes, and there is truth to that, that it does pull stuff out of your body and you are detoxifying, but that's not really the key point of using the ion pro wave. So the ion pro wave is getting different frequencies in your body that you can't use the bulb for. So you're using higher frequencies typically with that with that ion pro wave. Is there some detoxification that will take place? Yes. Is the change of color of the water um, a crucial thing that you're this is what I'm pulling out of my body? Only partially. Um, and I've written some blog posts about that when I was first, you could take the ion pro wave. Okay, I tend to be a skeptic. So uh, you take the ion pro wave, throw it in the water, and turn it on, run it on a program, and you're going to have some tannish color in the water because it is ionizing some of the minerals that are in the water. Depending on your water, you're going to have some different colors. Um, you're not going to get this nearly the same amount as if you had your feet in that bath too. So you are getting some pull and some changes. Uh, and some detoxification through your feet, but don't get too hung up on the color of the water or the gunkiness of the water. Don't get too hung up on that. That is not the primary purpose of the ion pro wave. So just, I know um, we all want to think, oh, I'm pulling out this and I'm pulling out this. Well, there's some truth to that. There, there's a lot of truth to that, but don't get too hung up on that. That's not the main purpose. Um, of course, you don't do the ion pro wave the same time you're doing the bulb, so there really is no correlation there. Can you do the ion pro wave while you're doing some of these other therapies? Well, let's talk about some of the other therapies and we'll talk about those. So one thing we have a lot of patients doing is these um, infrared heating pads. Now, there's several different types of infrared heating pads out on the market. This is one that we push. It's got like little jade um, uh, um, stones on it to help disperse that infrared heat. Um, it's, uh, those are nice little heating pads. Um, there's other people that have some ones with amethyst crystals in them. Uh, I can't remember the name of all those different ones. There's some that are a larger pad that you can lay on. Um, there's a lot of different ones on the market. They're all good. Now, I would not say they're good for killing cancer, they're not good for uh, that kind of thing, but they're good for helping with symptoms. It can really help you feel better, um, and it can decrease pain sometimes, but it is a heat source. So some people do much better with an infrared heating pad. It can really help the liver detoxify. If you put it over your liver, put it on your back, it can really give a lot of comfort. Some people do poorly with an infrared heating pad. It causes a little bit increased inflammation because of the heat, and it can actually increase pain. So everybody's a little bit different. Um, uh, I use this. I use this exact same pad right here. That's why I pull this picture up um, in the in the winter, typically on my chair here at work. Right now, it's actually sitting by the side of my desk because uh, I don't use it in the summer. Um, and um, there's times that it, it really gives me comfort, makes me feel better. There's times that I feel like I get a little more sore afterwards. Somebody asked a question about using the infrared heating pad while they're doing the coffee enema. They'll um, use the coffee enema and while they're waiting uh, and, and resting and allowing the coffee to help stimulate that vagus nerve, um, they'll lay down on a heating pad uh, or put the heating pad, wrap it around their uh, liver area um, or do it in correlation with doing like a castor oil pack over their liver and putting the heating pad over that. That's all acceptable. So that's all fine. You could do that. That can be beneficial. Um, it just depends on, you know, um, your situation and how you got your, uh, your house set up to do that. But uh, there could be benefit to using a heating pad while you're doing the coffee enema. Sure, there can be because that could just help again, that flow, that blood flow to the liver, the bile flow uh, from the liver down the common bile duct and help that uh, and help with your gallbladder flushing. So there could be some real good benefits to coupling up these therapies. Another home therapy is the PEMF. Of course, this one is not the same one we use at home, use in the office. 
uh, because the ones that we have for the office are just not cost effective. They're just too expensive for most people to have at home. Um, but a home type PEMF, this one is similar, a little bit different than the one we typically recommend. I just couldn't grab a picture of that real quick. Um, they're really great devices. Now there are some IMRS and Beamer devices out there that are the low frequency ones. Um, and there's the little bit higher, well actually the home ones are more medium frequency ones that we sell. Um, they can be great uh, machines to use. Now can you couple them with the heating pad? Yes, you can. Can you couple them with the Rife? Yes, you can. So I have a home uh, PEMF at home. Um, I don't use it as frequently as I used to, um, but definitely I would have my Rife running the same time you have the PEMF running, absolutely. Can you use the PEMF while you're using the Ion Cleanse? Absolutely, you can do that as well. So again, the only contraindication to the PEMF is if you have any uh, internal electrical device like a pacemaker or something like that. But certainly you could use the PEMF correlated with any other device, there's no issues with that. HBOT, um, so HBOT hyperbaric therapy is a great home device too that we have several patients that have an HBOT. This is one that is a real common one that they have at home. This is smaller than the one we have at the clinic. Um, uh, can you couple it with other therapies? No, you can't. Uh, because you can't get a cord in there for to get your bulb in there. Could you run the Rife outside of the HBOT, like right here, or set it on top of the window up there? Certainly you can. Uh, you're going to be about two feet away from it, uh, but that's just fine. You could. I would certainly, you're running this HBOT for an hour, I'd turn your Rife on and put the bulb right next to it if it's in the same location in the same room. Um, for sure, I do the Rife while I do the HBOT. The frequencies will still penetrate right through that wall of the HBOT and get into your body, so it's still gonna be a benefit. Of course, it's gonna be two, three feet away, so it's gonna be less benefit, but still, you're laying there for an hour, you might as well do it. So time use on the HBOT, you really need to use the HBOT typically an hour to two hours each session, and the frequency for cancer patients should be at least three times a week at least. If you have an HBOT at home, you should be doing it every day if at all possible. Busy days, skip those busy days, but you should shoot for trying to do it every day. Um, uh, that's the benefit of the HBOT. There's just a lot of studies on that. Uh, coffee enemas at home. Obviously, uh, use time. You're, when you first start doing coffee enemas, you might only be able to hold it for 30 seconds to two minutes. Your goal is to hold it for 10 to 20 minutes. Um, that would be a good goal in doing the coffee enemas. Um, some people never get up to that time. Don't beat yourself up. You're still getting stimulation of the vagal nerve. Doing it just even for 30 seconds, you're getting stimulation of the vagal nerve. And that's really the goal. You don't, you, you know, the longer you hold it, the better. There's argument to that. Um, the longer you hold it, you will probably absorb more of the coffee. Um, and that brings up another question. I know Michelle has touched on this multiple times too, but the longer you hold a coffee enema, the, uh, the more you will absorb, especially if you're more dehydrated. So if you drink, you make sure you keep your water intake up if you're doing coffee enemas. Frequency on coffee enemas, um, we have some people that are doing them once a week. We have some people doing them several times a week. We have a lot of people that are doing them every day. If you're doing a full true Gershon type protocol, which we don't have anybody doing a full Gershon protocol, that's you're doing coffee enemas three to five times a day. Um, we don't have anybody doing that right now. But um, doing coffee enemas can help with the pain. So that's one of the, I tend to forget to touch on when we talk about dealing with cancer pain. Uh, many times people do coffee enemas and it can really help lower the pain. Uh, there's many components of pain, and one can be an increase in sympathetic tone. So that is one of the huge benefits of a coffee enema is decreasing sympathetic tone because it stimulates the vagus nerve, um, and that is your parasympathetic supply. So that will help calm a parasympathetic overtone and stimulate those parasympathetics through the vagal nerve. 
Also, one of the reasons why coffee pen uh, enemas can help with pain is that uh, it can help flush the colon. And that can be a reason for pain if you have any colon distension. If you have distension of the intestines or blockage of the intestines in any way, that's why you really, really do not want to be constipated uh, at all, no matter what, and certainly if you have cancer. So frequency can be multiple times a day, especially if you're dealing with some pain um, or dealing with any colon issues, you can do multiple coffee enemas a day. Make sure you're drinking lots of water though. Um, you, in correlation of, with other uh, uh, therapies and coupling with other therapies, if you're holding your coffee enemas for 15, 20, 30 minutes, and you certainly can go lay on your bed and do PEMF uh, or heat or rife, um, not the ion cleanse, and obviously you can't do the HBOT, that could be a catastrophe. So, um, and the last one, home therapy that people are doing at home is the sauna. I put a picture of our solo sauna system, but um, there's all sorts of different sauna systems out there. Use time, again, you start with about five minutes of time. If you're just new to sauna, you have to get used to it, have your body get used to it. You're only in there for about five minutes. You move up to 10 minutes when you can tolerate that. You move 15 minutes, you can tolerate that. There's some people that they don't start sweating till 15 to 20 minutes into the sauna. But even at that, you wanna go to your own tolerance. So when you start out at five minutes at a time, maybe that's all you can really take right now, even though you didn't even start sweating. The idea is you have to build up to that. And it takes some getting used to. Um, uh, frequency, you can do a sauna every day. Um, if you're, in, and then some of the things that you wanna couple with the sauna is making sure that you're getting minerals if you're sweating a lot. So if you're doing a sauna every day, but you're hardly sweating, you're just a little clammy and you go take a shower, you're not gonna really need to have to supplement with any extra minerals. But if you're doing a sauna every day and you are sweating like a stuck pig, well then you better make sure you're adding some minerals uh, supplementation to your diet as well, even if your diet is good. You don't want to end up uh, be low in minerals and then and then just losing all your water. Uh, so you need to keep your electrolyte levels up. Um, I know I do a sauna and I feel so much better when I do a sauna. So um, can you couple the sauna with anything? Yeah, you could certainly have the rife going on when you have a sauna. Um, you, the, you don't, you really wouldn't be able to couple anything else with the sauna, but definitely the rife could be coupled with the sauna. Um, per personally, I don't do that because where my sauna is, it's not near the rife and I'm not moving it. But so, uh, but the sauna is another great home therapy to use. Okay, I will open it up and unmute everybody and uh, you're all live. So if you have any questions, now is the time to speak up or forever hold our peace. This is Dottie, and I had a question. Someone told me that almonds from the USA are washed with polypropylene or something they use in battery acid. So not to buy almonds from the USA, but to buy them from Mexico. Have you heard of that? Uh, so question is, are almonds from the USA washed with polypropylenes or poly polyethanol or some toxic substance and you shouldn't buy almonds from the US? I did hear that um, a while back, several months ago, maybe or a year ago. Um, I, you know, I don't, I haven't, I don't know if it's completely true. I don't know if it's from different almond farms. I, I don't. I don't know that I can verify that. Um, you know, this is the struggle that we get with most of our food products. Um, you know, how much of them have poisons and, you know, GMOs, even if they say no GMOs, it's just, it's, it's a very, it's a very difficult subject because we just, there's so much that we just don't know. And we can trust a company and trust a food product and then we can be completely misled. Um, so yeah, that is difficult 
I mean, I, I would, um, you know, I honestly, I mean, I am, uh, I lived in Mexico and I, there's lots of things about the trustworthiness of some of their products coming out of there that I would be cautious about as well. So um, it, it is hard. Um, and, and some of these things you can, you can soak, like with, with all the nuts, if you soak them overnight, that can help with some issues that are on the surface. But if there's anything that is, that there's, the trees are sprayed with, or your product, any other food product is sprayed with, or that's in the soil um, because of previous sprays, well, it's going to be in the cellular structure of the product, so it's going to be impossible to wash it out. So yeah, it's a it's a difficult thing. Uh, we When we buy almonds, I just buy the almonds, the standard almonds um, that are out there. But it gets to, when you're dealing with food products like that, you kind of got to pick your battles. You know, you do your best um, and you just, you do your best and you got to trust God. For the Thank you. I have another question and it's about SEAC tea, which I am drinking either before I eat or after. Um, and we're making it the way you're supposed to, but would it be better to buy the SEAC tea concentrate that you have and use that instead of making our own? I mean, would it be more effective? No, I don't think it'd be any more effective. The 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 tea type SEAC that you make is just as good as the concentrate. Uh, it tends to be a little less expensive, I believe, as well. Um, the only thing that I would say about the SEAC is that um, you make sure that you're you're taking it on more of an empty stomach. Um, and the way that uh, Renee used to teach how to drink the SEAC is to sip it like a tea uh, so that you just get the slow infusion of it um, over the course of about 30 minutes. Okay, thank you. Dr. Connors, this is Janet Hitzling. Hello. Hi. Um, I have been having problems with a tooth, and when I was there at the clinic, I still had two amalgam fillings I needed to um, get out, which I did do that. Yeah. And then I had a root canal, and you had suggested I wait to have that removed. I haven't had that removed, but this tooth is a totally different tooth that was not in the picture at all. And it just flared up all of a sudden and really was has been bothering me. So do and, you already uh, have a filling in that tooth? Yes. And I, I did go to, the, to my biological dentist um, last Thursday. It started bothering me Wednesday. And by Thursday, it was quite bad. And he, we, first of all, we thought it was a tooth that had a crown on it. But he, he did an x-ray because we didn't have a good x-ray on it. And he... Really, he said, I really can't see anything that's alarming to me. He said, why don't you go home and do, you know, lots of salt water. And I told him about the um, tooth miracle oil that I had um, from you. And he said, do that. And so I did all those things. And then it got a little better. But then I thought about the rife. And I looked up um, programs for the dental. Um, it's what is it? Dental infections. Yeah. And so Sunday, I mean, there was really good information on there. So they said to run that, this program three times back to back, which I did. For, so for three hours, Sunday, then um, Monday and Tuesday, I did it. At, I ran it for at least three hours and it's a lot better. It's not totally gone, but it's a lot better. And I'm still doing salt water and all of that. My question is, can can I do too much of the right? You just said you can't do too much of the right. Okay, can I do too much of it when I'm running programs like that? And then also trying to run 
the cancer programs? Okay. So the answer to that question is no, you can't do too much. Okay. Um, the, the, the deeper answer to tooth issues is that we'll, if, I have, if I have a cavity, will running any of the RIFE programs solve the problem of the cavity? No. So, but if I have a, a tooth that's bothering me and I think I have a cavity, you go get an x-ray and the dentist is a good, honest dentist. He's like, I, I don't know. I don't think it's a cavity. Then it's quite possibly a, an infection. And mm -hmm. then running those infection programs. And I would recommend that you do run the dental infection programs on the Rife. If you're not getting any uh, relief from that, don't feel bad about running the viral program, the viral complex program. Well, that's not a dental program. Well, we're just talking about a biotoxin in your tooth. We don't know if it's bacterial or it's fungus or it's viral. So run the viral complex program, run the fungal programs, and go to the bacterial programs too. None of them say dental on them, but you just want to make sure you're, you're hitting the frequencies that are going to be specific to that infection if it is an infection. So um, you cannot run too many of those programs. So okay. you cannot hurt yourself running too many of those programs. Um, if it's not an infection and it just is a cavity and it's, you know, just literally air or saliva that's dipping at that nerve because the cavity is as deep as a nerve root, that's why a cavity would hurt, um, is the right programs are going to help. So um, you have to get a filling, you have to get that corrected by the dentist. But um, So so the, they did look at that and the filling that's there, I just actually had it filled, not not that long ago, maybe within the last year or so, by a different dental, uh, a different dentist that I've quit going to. But the filling they said is very close to the nerve, which could be the reason why I'm having problems. Um, yes, it could be because you might, underneath that filling, if they didn't do a good job of getting it stuffed in there, you could have a little bit of a cavity still, and you could have, remember, your teeth are, um, you know, they're not this, this solid material. If you look at it under a microscope, your teeth have all these little little, cra little um, canals in them, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're a porous structure like a bone. Mm -hmm. um, and bacteria could get in there and could be hiding underneath that filling and could be continuing to erode away, and that's what's hitting that nerve. Well, if you use the rife to kill that, the bacteria, that is really good, but that doesn't mean it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay gone. Right. Um, so you, more bacteria are going to get in there as you eat something else tomorrow for supper, and you still may need to get that filling popped out, drilled out, and refixed. But if it is all the way down to the nerve, they might say, oh boy, this is, we're gonna have to do a root canal, then we need to have another discussion. Yeah, well, I, I'm done with root canals. Okay. <laughs> I'm done with them. I'll just have the tooth pulled. I don't like that idea, but that's why I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm trying to save it if I can. Yeah. So, all right, so, um, so I'm feeling today, I'm feeling just kind of run down again and almost like fatigued and a little bit shaky. So that's, I would get to feeling this way when I was back several months ago when I was doing so much rife and then I have a beamer and I was doing that. So I thought maybe I was doing too much of the rife, but you don't think that how I'm feeling would be caused from... No, I don't think it's from too much of the rife. I think if anything, it could be because you have this little subclinical infection going on. Okay. So maybe I just need to think about having it pulled. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, but maybe just keep doing what you're doing. If the pain does go away, then that could be a good sign that the maybe pain, it could have calmed yeah. down. It is calming down. It's majorly better than it was. Okay. So... And I have one more quick question. Can I have, so can I have too many carbs because I'm eating um, buckwheat, pancake, buckwheat pancakes for breakfast, 
And then if I have um, quinoa or rice and lentils or some potatoes for supper, is it too much to have too, I mean, for a long time I had no carbs in my diet and now you've said I could add some. So I'm trying to decide if I can, if I'm still doing, if I could do too many of those. Well, absolutely, we can't be too, too many of those. So um, uh, we're not asking you to count your total grams of carbs at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you did, um, you'd be surprised that you're probably creeping up there. So sometimes if you get a kind of a check in your spirit about eating too many carbs, it just might be good to just calm it down and kind of do a little meaty carb fast for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't mean you're cutting them out all together, but just cut them way back for a couple of days and then slowly <laughs> go back. And sometimes it's good to do that every couple of weeks. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how I, I just, have, I was doing so marvelous. And for weeks after I got, after being out there, I felt so good. Now I've been, I've had the last week or so of just not feeling the greatest. And that's like, okay, I'll, I can go through periods of I'm listening to what you just said about yourself. So sometimes you'll go through a week or two of not feeling the greatest. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just know that at least in my experience and my experience with dealing with patients for 21 years mm -hmm. is that um, it can be like a roller coaster. Yep. So, um, you know, quite honestly, and I've told, shared this on other Zoom calls and with, with uh, people in person, a year ago this time, I was quite sure I wasn't going to make it till Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, I was really feeling bad. And, um, and then it was about a, a week before Christmas, I just started to perk up and feel a little bit better. And then, and then I felt pretty good through January, February, then March, I kind of went, kind of crashed a little bit, but not like last October. And so it's just, it's just kind of like a roller coaster. Okay. And it's gotten to the point last summer when my, my kids or my family, other people, you know, doctors, I know, hey, how you doing? I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> I know, yes, <laughs> I hear you. If I'm feeling really good today, tomorrow I could feel like, <laughs> okay, it's over. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Don't even ask me. I'm not, I, I, just, I just tell everybody I feel doing great now, whether I'm feeling lousy or not, because it's like, okay, I'm just going to be doing great. I'm not going to talk about this anymore. It just doesn't help. So um, I just over that piece. So just sometimes you just kind of got to get over micromanaging how you feel. Yeah. yeah. And how do we know when we should get back out there to see you or be rechecked? I mean, how do we know when that's the time? Or and That's a good question. I mean, people that are close to us, it's easy. It's an easy question to answer. Um, yeah. And uh, why everybody would want to come to Minnesota in January and February, I just do not know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so cleansing. Uh, but uh, th that's a personal question. So, you know, it's just a matter of just kind of just pray about it. And, and okay. um, you know, we're here for you anytime. So, um, you know, for sure, if a person feels like they're crashing, it might be a good time to revisit. Um, but uh, that's not always the only time. You know, we have some people that they'll, you know, come in every, you know, the local people might come in every month to get rechecked or every two months, three months, four months. Uh, we have people that drive, you know, from, um, you know, south of Chicago up here every three months. Um, so everybody's a little bit different with that. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Dr. Kellers, this is Cher Horesco. Hi, Cher. A um, couple of things. I want. I, I guess I want to bounce off her a little bit on the dental work. Uh, what is your best way, or what should you do? Like, you know, I had uh, upper all this dental work done, and then my dentist, the biological dentist, he really doesn't do anything as far as detox afterwards. He said, really, that wasn't like. He had to take care of that through someone else. Um, a lot of 
other ones aren't like that, but he is. And I know I ran into a lot of trouble um, afterwards. So after so, what procedure? Yeah. Oh, I had two root canal teeth pulled, um, amalgams taken out. You know, I just, I had a lot of work done and we did it all in one day. Um, but it just, uh, you know, I had gotten sick and then I really think that had a lot to do, um, oddly, <laughs> uh, several weeks ago, uh, I coughed up something because I had laryngitis for 40 days and then it went to a cough and I really think it's all related to my dental work. Sure. And well, it, it can be, and you know, it depends on, you know, even if you have a, a good biological dentist, there's, you know, unless you're doing everything without anesthesia, um, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're going to have to detox that anesthesia. You're going to, um, if they're doing any filling, old filling removal, I'm, there's going to be some spilled into mm -hmm. your system. You have to detox that. Well, so, see, I, it, one of the root canal teeth, uh, it did have a black root on it. So I was sure. real thankful I got that out. But what was weird a few weeks ago, and I can't believe I didn't save it, but I really believe I coughed up a piece of string that's probably been in my throat for months. Well, that's kind of scary. Yeah, it was. I mean, he used a rubber dam and everything, uh -huh. but... Um, but I'm like, I really think that that's, you know, probably where that came from. And of course, you know, I'm just so thankful I got my voice back. I was beginning to wonder, sure. you know, on that. So, well, anyway. there's two ways to detox when you do dental work. When you're looking at okay. detoxing chemicals like, um, you know, anesthesia or, or heavy metals, mercury from fillings or other chemicals from other composite fillings. Um, you're using a chelator. So a chelator like um, our Clear, something with uh, maybe DMSA, EDTA in it, um, other chelating agents. Um, okay. And then the second thing is that, okay, you pull out a root canal tooth that was infected and the root was infected, making sure that you're, you, you're running some of the RIFE programs or biotoxins, or using that tooth and gum oil will help uh, okay. boosting Good up enough. your immune system with some immune supplements too. Okay, and I am doing the Kela Cure even now. Okay, good. So yeah, okay, because uh, I do have more dental work to get done on the lower. It won't be quite as. You know, I don't have any more root canals, but. Okay, Still. when you get to the point of doing that, make sure you post on the Facebook page what you're going to do, and I'll give you some other hints if there's any. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I know they want me to come in for a cleaning, and and then I'm like, oh, man, I don't, I'm don't. i not really ready. I, I don't feel I'm ready yet. I don't think I can physically handle it since what happened, but, right. but I do want to get the other junk out of my mouth, too. Right. So that's important. Okay, real quick. Um, I went to physical therapy today for the lymphedema and uh, they're going to see if I can get a lympha press at home. And that's something that will manually work on my arm. And what is like it called? Lympha press, huh. P-R-E-S-S. -S. And she said, it'll be like a sleeve. I'll put my arm in and it will gradually pump the lymph. For me and she so said it's like a compression sleeve yeah it's like a compression sleeve but it's powerized you know cool. yeah i thought that was pretty good and um so hopefully in the next few weeks i'll get that and i'm praising the lord i've been 15 days pain free <laughs> that's been pretty awesome that's since, really awesome you know since i was in the er a few weeks ago so yeah that's really so that, awesome that was good Sticking with the low histamine diet, which I really haven't figured out really too good. I'm probably not eating the best with that, but blood work, I'm going to redo November 12th and it'll be red the 26th. Okay, good. I'll look forward to seeing that. Yeah, just praying that, you know, those counts will start going the other way. I just so. remember with the low histamine diet, it's not a matter of 
not eating histamines. It's a matter of just trying to be more aware and decreasing that consumption. Okay. Yeah, I've been trying to, I don't know. It's, like I said, it, it's not been the easiest for me. I figure I, I'm like, it's enough being a vegan. To, to, yeah. No, okay, like everything I was eating, right. it seemed like every day, like I really shouldn't have been eating. But the other thing that has changed is my brain, and that's been clear now for probably a few weeks. And I didn't oh, know it was, I didn't know it was foggy. That's yeah. the other scary, scary thing. That's but, the scary thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's, you know, so I feel like there's a couple things on the positive, positive side, anyway. Right? That's right. We've got to count our blessings, right? Yes, sir. All right, that's, I do every day. <laughs> Okay. Another well, question. Okay. Another question came in is the question was: Is Italian zero zero flour acceptable for a free <laughs> cancer diet? I have a friend who's very sensitive to gluten, and they could eat Italian zero zero flour. So uh, that's a that's a stumper for me because I don't. I've never heard of Italian zero zero flour. I do know other people that are celiacs that were able to eat some European wheat flours. Um, that um, they didn't react to crazy thing there. Um, so I'm not familiar um, with the Italian zero zero flour. I, I would be, I'd love to know where you get it. Um, if a person who is celiac or very sensitive to gluten can eat it with no problem, I would say it's probably fine for a person uh, that we were taking them off for cancer to eat as well. But I would love to have you post um, the person who uh, posted this question, I'd love to have you post on the Facebook page where you get it, because um, I'd be interested in that as well. All right. Well, I think we're about up with our time. Um, please don't hesitate to um, email your questions in. Just please put in the um, in the email uh, Zoom question uh, so that it gets tagged so we can find it and uh, we'll try to address that question. Matter of fact, this whole initial presentation came from a question that somebody sent in. So um, continue to do that if you think of your questions midweek so you don't have to wait for the Zoom call to ask them and we can address them even more thoroughly. Thanks for everybody for being on. And uh, we will talk to you next week. Make sure you continue to use the Facebook page. Um, and we do appreciate your likes on Facebook posts and our chats and uh, our uh, podcasts. You uh, look for our podcasts and make sure you watch the Ann and Ashley show, which is something they just started a few weeks ago. If you like and share that, well, that would be great as well. If you have any good testimonials, um, please feel free to share that on Facebook as well. Thanks, everybody. I love you all. I'll be praying for you. Know that I do pray for you, everybody, on a daily basis. And um, um, I just uh, am very grateful for all of you. So oh. thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Crowner. Thank love you, too. Yes, okay. love you, too. Thank you. All right. Talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye. Uh, mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.